What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be taking you through how I made my new bass house track moving. This track is actually from my last bass house tutorial and I decided to do something with it and release it. So it's going to be out, should be out right now when you're watching this video actually, I hope so. But uh, yeah, if it's not you'll be able to pre-save it so go do that. But before we get into it, I gotta let you guys know about a few things. Firstly, my Spire Essentials preset pack just dropped on my website. Full of so many good basses, leads, chords, plucks, all that good stuff that you need to build a full track, all from the same bank. It's got so many good sounds in it, so go check that out and grab yourself a copy if you want to. The next, all my music is actually up for sale on my website as well. They're only a couple of bucks each. So if you want to support the channel and help me make this channel bigger and better and do bigger and better content, go grab yourself a couple of copies of those because it really does mean a lot. And then finally, if you just want to support me and help the channel grow, give the video a like, hit that subscribe button, leave some comments, do all that sort of good stuff. And it really does help out the channel. So that means a lot. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So we're just gonna work from start to finish here. So we'll start off with the intro. Super simple intro. It's just a little bit of drums, some bass, something like nice and bouncy to sort of bring the track in. So firstly, we just got the kick, a little bit of low end cut out so it's not so punchy. We got some claps, this little perk loop from a Mysteria pack, a crash cymbal, and then just a little drum fill. So this is our drums. Next up, I've just got a bunch of effects and impacts and all that sort of stuff. You know what it is, got a riser, all that sort of good stuff, just to sort of help with all the transitions. And then we've got this siren. And this is just made with a plugin called Siren. It's really good for making all those little alarm sounds and risers and all that stuff. It's super simple and it's free. So just Google that and go grab yourself a copy. It's really good. And then finally, we've got a sub bass just some of the lows rolled out and then some of the mids boosted. And then finally, we've just got the vocals with a whole bunch of delay and reverb on them. We move in big. So this is our intro. We move in big. So now we're going to come into the first breakdown. Again, just some very, very simple drums. Got a percussion loop from a Mysteria pack. Crash cymbal. And then this break beat, again, from a Mysteria pack. If you guys want those packs, go check out his YouTube channel. He gives them all away for free and they're super, super good. And next, again, just got a bunch of impacts and rises and the siren and all that sort of stuff. So we've got this riser that runs through the whole break right through the build-up as well, just to really help with that transition from the break into the build-up into the drop. Then again, we've got the siren and some vinyl crackle. Vinyl crackle is a super, super good thing to use in your breakdowns, just to help fill out that space. Then next up, we've just got this pluck. Which is just a serum preset with some EQ cutting all the lows, some OTT set at 66%, some delay, some reverb, and then just a compressor. Then next up, we've got a respace, which is actually in a serum pack that I've got coming out very, very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. And as you can see, there is no processing on this channel because the respace just works so well the way I've made it within Serum. And then finally, we've got the main vocals, which just have some OTT at 38%, some reverb and some delay. We move in big. Got this money coming real fucking quick. So this is what our breakdown sounds like. So 
as you can see, super, super short, but that's all I needed it to be for that first break. Now we come into the build up. We've just got the snares and they've just got some EQ cutting some of the lows. And then as the build up rises, you can see here, they just thin out with some automation, cutting more and more lows as it rises up. And then there's some automation on my bass clef easy washout as well. Then we've just got these secondary snares that just sit underneath on the last part of our build up. You can tell they're really not much, but they help sort of just fill out that build up and help it transition into the drop. And again, we've just got some impacts and some risers. And then we've got our main drop lead that filters in. So this has a fair bit of processing on it. It's got an EQ that's cutting most of the lows and some of the mids, just to really thin that sound out. Got a saturator, an OTT at 50%, a reverb, an auto filter, a compressor, and then a bass clef easy washout. So as, as you'll be able to hear, the sound is very, very thin. And then that bass clef easy washout really helps it sound bigger while still staying thin, if that makes sense. And then again, we've just got our vocals that run through the whole build up. We move in mixed. We move in mixed. We move in mixed. Got this money coming. So this is what our build up is. So now onto the best part, the drop. So for this, I'm gonna show you the second drop just cause there's a few little interesting things in there that I changed from the first, but all up, they're pretty much the same drops and the same breakdown, but the breakdown's just a little bit longer. So first up, we just get our kick, which is out of a Mysteria pack again, which is now hitting at full power. It's just got an EQ rolling off some of that really low end mud, anything below 25 Hertz. And then a compressor just doing a little bit of gain reduction just to really punch it up a bit. Next, we've got some claps. Got a secondary clap we're just sort of adding as a filler. Offbeat hats. It's got this one shot percussion. Some drum fills. And then two lots of white noise. White noise is such a good thing to use in your tracks to really help fill out that space and add a bit of variation in and keep it super, super interesting without taking up too much room within your track. And then we've got some impacts just for those transitions. And next we've got our main lead. So the main lead has an EQ rolling off most of the lows, a saturator set at 71%, and then with the frequency down low, so it's grabbing more of those lower frequencies, an OTT at 25%, a reverb, an overdrive, and then a compressor just doing a bit of side chaining. And finally, we've got our bass. This bass is literally just a sub with a little bit of distortion on it within Serum. And all it's got on the processing channel is just a compressor doing some side chaining. And that's really all I needed for this bass. I didn't need it to be anything super strong. I just needed it to carry the low end of my main lead. And then when we move into the second part of our drop, adding just like a little trap sort of break at the very start of it, just to create a bit of variation and just keep the song a bit more interesting. So we got our kicks that change pattern for a couple of bars. We've got the same perk. And then we've got this trap snare and drum fill. And then I just added in this, the siren. The lead stays the same. And then my sub bass just follows the pattern of the kicks. And then once that trappy sort of break finishes, I just added in an extra percussion loop. 
So this is what our drop sounds like all together. <laughs> So now I'm going to run you through a bit about how I do all of my mastering for pretty much all of my songs. So with my master channel, the first thing I put on here is an EQ. I've just got an EQ cutting everything below 25 hertz because you can't really hear that stuff anyway, but it can create a lot of that low end mud, which you just you don't want in your track. So just roll everything off below there. And we've got a harsh cut on everything above 19.8 kilohertz which is just stuff you couldn't hear anyway. So all I would do there is just come through with, with this little headphone button turned on and just keep pushing back until I can just hear it, move it back towards the high end a bit more till you can't hear anything and leave it right there. So you're cutting stuff that you can't hear anyway. The next up, we've got a secondary EQ, which I've just got a small boost at around 200 Hertz because I felt it was lacking a little bit. And then a small cut at around 10K. Then next we've got an OTT with the amount at 18% and all I do here is just bring these sliders forward and back until they're just hanging onto the bars. This is a trick that I learned from Zenworld and it's always worked wonders for me. So you can see there, I would have brought the lows back because I felt like they were pushing through too much and then the mids as well. And next up, we've got a glue compressor just to help tighten everything up a lot more. Got my attack on point one, release on point two, ratio on two, the threshold at 17.5, the makeup at 4.76, and then the range at 6 dB. And that just sort of helps bring the whole track together. The next, we've got a saturator, and I literally just use the a bit warmer preset for this, and it just works. And it's just set at 7%. You don't want it doing too much. You can hear if you turn it right up, it just distorts the fuck out of it. See, it just sounds like shit. So it's 7%, it works quite well. And then we've just got a loud max limiter. And this is just a free limiter you can get. And you know, it's nothing amazing, but it works well. So I've just got the threshold here at negative 6.1, which is just more than enough. And finally, all we've got is just, these don't do anything, but they're good just to know how loud your track's getting and see what frequencies are lacking. I've got a span and then the Ulean loudness meter. You can see there hitting at negative eight decibels, which is more than loud enough. You don't need to be hitting much more than that. If you can push it to negative six, great, but be very careful of distortion. Like you can hit at negative 12, negative 13, and your songs can sound just as loud as every other song, as long as you've got a good mix. So this is what our final track sounds like.
that is how I made my brand new track moving. Make sure you guys go stream it on Spotify. And if you want to be an absolute legend and support me, you can go buy it on my site. It's only like $2 Australian and it really helps support the channel. And go buy the Spire pack if you want some really, really awesome presets. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. So if you buy that, thank you so much and thank you for supporting me. But anyway, that's all we've got for today's video. Make sure you smash the subscribe button, give the video a like, leave some comments, do all that sort of good stuff because it really does help the channel. And thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.